A convicted cop shooter learns his fate. Good evening. This is CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Byron Scott, a man who shot a Prince George's police officer outside a nightclub in July of 2012 will face at least two decades in jail. Kelly Gillis, Gillis was sentenced this morning to 40 years behind bars for shooting an officer outside of the Galaxy nightclub. Now, authorities say police officers Rafael Jacob, Chung Lee and Jose Rosales were working part time at the Galaxy and Copacabana nightclub in Langley Park. That's when the security alerted them to Gillis, who was accused of stealing a phone. When officers recovered the phone from the man, he was asked to leave the club. And as Gillis, were told, was driving out of the parking lot, he fired five shots at the officers, hitting one in the leg. I am absolutely satisfied and happy with the 40 year sentence. I think that that sentence proved a lot for the criminal justice system and it says a lot to our community that we're not going to tolerate the nonsense of crimes that is violating our community. The guns that is used to kill and harm innocent people is not going to be tolerated in Prince George County. And with the fellows of my fellow law enforcement officers and the state's attorney, I think this was an awesome win for us today. Definitely a, a, a just sentence in the case. We believe that it is appropriately firm, um, that the judge intended to send the message that if you attack uh, one of our officers, you attack our entire community and that that would be uh, handled harshly. And so we believe the 40 years um, is appropriate in this case and that it sends the right message. And Kelly Gillis will be eligible for a parole after serving 20 years behind bars. For the second time in a week, firefighters were at the same location putting out a blaze. On Wednesday, a two-story townhouse on Compton Avenue in Laurel went up in flames, which also caused damage to the two adjoining residences. Then again, on Friday morning, crews were back on the scene. Investigators say the fire may have reignited from embers. The original cause of Wednesday's fire is still under investigation. Seven adults and two children have been displaced by the tragedy. And the county's fire marshal has announced two arson arrests. 20-year-old David Reschenberg of New Carrollton allegedly threatened to torture McDonald's in Beltsville. Reschenberg was picked up earlier this week and released pending a hearing. And in separate unrelated incidents, 40-year-old Lenesclio Brown of Suitland has been arrested. He's accused of committing several crimes uh, related to a car fire. Brown also arrested on Tuesday. An outpouring of support has been flowing into the Howard County Police Department in the wake of last week's tragic shooting, and now the police chief is giving thanks back. Chief William McMahon says his entire department is humbled and grateful for all the encouragement that's been received through emails, phone calls, and social media. McMahon says he also received praise from the public, saying that his force met and even exceeded expectations. Last Saturday, 19-year-old Darian Aguilar opened fire at the Mall of Columbia, killing two people before fatally shooting himself. In a police-issued statement, Chief McMahon says, thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your continued support. This type of tragedy should never happen here or anywhere. It's a comfort to know that in the worst of times, we in Howard County band together with a kinship and sense of community. A vigil was held last night in memory of the victims. And Michelle, much of the nation will be watching the big game, the Super Bowl on Sunday, and the ads that will air during the showdown. One of those ads will be a two-minute spot titled Proud to Be. Now, the ad was produced by the National Congress of American Indians. It features images of Native Americans and a narrator listing the many names they call themselves, including Oneida and Nation, nation and Choctaw. And then the spot, which will, be, which will be seen by millions watching the Denver Broncos and the Seattle Seahawks, ends this way. Native Americans call themselves many things. The one thing they don't. Now, just last week, a poll conducted by a North Carolina company indicated 71% of Americans said they don't want to change the team's name. Meanwhile, Byron, police are reminding fans to be safe while partaking in, in all the big game festivities. Whether you're hosting a party or going out to watch the Super Bowl, don't drink and drive. Not only is it dangerous, but police will be out in full force. So call a cab, let guests stay over, or designate a sober driver. Now let's get ready for some football. For area restaurants and bars, preparation started weeks ago. Rebecca Payne, general manager at Hard Times Cafe in College Park, says that means stocking the kitchen, scheduling extra we staff. We staff it like it's a 
busy game. So we kind of double, triple up the staff back there, but they all have their specific tasks in mind and everyone has designated their roles, whether it's in the dining room or in the kitchen. Big sellers are definitely the wings. Um, we probably order 10 times as many wings as we would normally order. We'll probably sell more than 5,000 wings on Sunday. Um, and then just bulk chili orders. Those are the biggest ones, quarts of chili, gallons of chili, um, and all your toppings, racks of cornbread, things like that. If a house party is more your style and you haven't yet gone to the store to get your favorite snacks, you better go ASAP. Wait too long for items like queso dip, avocados, and tostitos, and Byron, you're likely to find bare shells. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you're watching CTV News. I'm Rochelle Metzger. And I'm Byron Scott.